What is up? What is up? What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Mitch Davis Show. I'm your host, Mitch Davis, founder of the Mitch Davis Show.com, podcast host of the Mitch Davis Show. On today's episode, I'm going to be joined by the one and only Mr. College Football himself, Tony Barnhart. We're going to be talking all things Southeastern Conference football. I mean, this is just the greatest thing ever. We're, you know, getting closer to kickoff, getting closer to SEC Media Days. The SEC media, the SEC meetings in Destin are coming up. I mean, it is just a great time for Southeastern Conference football. And even the offseason, football never sleeps in the Southeastern Conference. So Tony Barnhart will be joining me momentarily to talk all things SEC football. But before we get into that, I want to say all the shows are brought to you by the Cotton States Baseball League in New Albany, Mississippi, the premier summer collegiate baseball league in the South. I mean, really, truthfully, there's not a better baseball league for development, for getting players to the next level. I mean, they have just so many great endorsements, including Don Kessinger, John Cohen, and many, many more. So check out the Cotton States Baseball League. Going to be out there all summer helping those guys out and going to be running their media relations, doing Twitter and doing articles and podcasts and broadcasting, everything Baseball, Cotton States Baseball League. Check them out. Head on over to BNA Park there in New Albany, Mississippi. Uh, before I get into this, follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. Head on over to the website, the Mitch Davis Show.com. And then the podcast, you can find it on YouTube by simply typing in The Mitch Davis Show. Thank you so much for listening. At this time, I'd like to welcome the legendary Tony Barnhart to The Mitch Davis Show. I want to welcome uh, Mr. College Football to the Mitch Davis Show, Mr. Tony Barnhart. Thank you for coming on the Mitch Davis Show. How are you doing in the spring ball season? Uh, I'm I'm doing well, Mitch. It's good to, it's good to be with you. This is a you know, time of year that, that things slow down a little bit. We've got Destin coming up uh, later on this month, and we're keeping our eye on that. And I've got a book coming out this fall, and having to finish up that. But uh, I'm I'm staying about as busy as I want to be. <laughs> I hear you. I want to ask you about what do you expect to see out of and hear out of Destin? You know, a lot of a lot of stuff has happened the last what three months or so since yeah. Georgia dismantled TCU in the national championship game. What do you expect to hear and see out of Destin? Well, there's going to be a lot of talk uh, about a lot of things. How much is going to actually get done remains to be seen. Like, let's, first of all, let's take NIL. There's going to be a lot of talk about NIL. Is anything going to be done about it or changed or modified? No, no, because it's, 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 we're not there. We're not there yet. Uh, I think the front burner issue for this meeting with Destin is eight or nine game conference schedule. And I think Commissioner Sankey, well, I know Commissioner Sankey was hoping to get this done before we got to Destin so it wouldn't suck all the oxygen out of the room. But as we go on, it seems to be getting more complicated and not less complicated. And so we may get it done down there, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know that we will. What are you hearing on regarding the eight or nine? I know certain programs like Kentucky, for example, they're in favor of the eight game because they want to keep the rivalry game with U of L Georgia wants to keep Georgia tech on the schedule. What are you hearing? Well, what, what you hear is that as, you know, a, a month ago, a month ago, I would have guaranteed that there was going to be a nine-game conference schedule with the with the format, and uh, that allows you to play everybody home and away over four years. That that just seemed like a no-brainer to me. But now, Mitch, some of the realities of this stuff is starting to hit home, particularly with the coaches. Wait, wait a minute. You tell me I got to play another conference game, and if I've got a team that's good enough to make the playoffs. Won't that possibly hurt my ability to get into the playoffs, particularly next year when the 12-team format comes into play? I just think the reality is starting to hit. Hit well, Nick Saban. Nick Saban has been a Nick Saban has been advocating a nine-game conference schedule for the last ten years. He was the only one who wanted to do it. Now he's backing away from that. Why? Because the reality has hit that his three permanent opponents, the ones you play every single year, could be. Auburn, Tennessee, and LSU, <laughs> three teams that'll, that are going to be really, really good year in and year out. So I, I think the, the fact that Nick Saban is back the way, coaches who, who want to get to bowl games realize that this hurts the percentages, their percentages. Go, if you're one of the uh, mid-level, the middle-class teams in the SEC, you know, this 
this is it, it's a fit you know you need to win that extra game so I think that's going to dominate the conversation uh I'm sure the gambling issues that have popped up uh Iowa State and Iowa obviously the Alabama baseball coach that will come up I don't it's way too soon to do anything about it in my opinion but it will absolutely be a topic of discussion you know, I want to ask you, you know, before we go into any more talking SEC football, I want to ask you about the, a little bit about the gambling issues. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's still early in this and still a lot of news and information has still yet to be presented. What are right. your early takeaways from that? And, and how do we get ahead of the curve a little bit with the gambling and the NIL stuff? Well, as, as my uh, good friend Matt Hayes pointed out, uh, the word, the terms get ahead of it and the NCAA do not belong in the same sentence because the NCAA never gets ahead of anything, and this is yet living proof of that. Matt Matt did a really good column uh, over at uh, Saturdays in the South. Uh, the, I think we're dealing with a couple of different things. One, the coaching situation at Alabama where the coach was in directly or indirectly involved with passing along gambling information, that's – you know what? That's a no-brainer. That, that's really not a hard call. If that happens, and you're you're an employee of the university, guess what? You're not going to be an employee of the university any longer. What the NCAA chooses to do with you is another issue, but you won't be employed there. To me, that's a that's a no-brainer. The bigger issue is um, when players get involved and do things that are legal for everybody else to to go on these sites and put down a bet online. But they can't be legal for the players, which I think is what's going to happen. You know, there, there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, that's not that's not fair because the other students get to gamble. And my response is, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> no, it's a different deal. But that those are the two, the two issues, Mitch, is what do you do with student athletes who gamble? And what do you do with employees like coaches who gamble? And the two different set of um, – it's a, it's a different situation, but I think the bottom line is that if you are a student athlete and the NCAA sponsors a sport, your sport or any other, you can't bet on it. You can't. I want to, I want to jump over to talking SEC football now. Obviously, Georgia back-to-back national champions and seemingly is the perennial power right now to be coming into the 2023 season. Talk about the Georgia Bulldogs. What do you expect to see out of them this fall? Well, obviously, Kirby Smart has done an incredible job of building the program and the definition of program, stacking top three, top two, top one recruiting classes on top of each other allows you to do what Georgia has done. And now, it, will Georgia be as talented this year as they were last year? No, but they'll be still be really good. They'll still be really talented. And when you look at their schedule, my goodness, once upon a time, they had Oklahoma on this schedule but they're not there anymore. And you look at their, if you go down their list, you're saying, okay, who on this, who's going to beat these guys? Uh, you know, who's going to beat them? I think the obvious circle that you draw is Georgia going to Tennessee on November 18th. That's the game. Now, you know, they'll have other tough games. They had a tough game with Missouri last year. But right now, if you're just going to look at it logically, you don't see anybody on that schedule with the possible exception of Tennessee that can beat them. I want to ask you a little bit about Tennessee football. Obviously, look at Josh Heupel. Look what he did last year. They beat Alabama. They got to a New Year's Six Bowl. What do you expect to see out of the Volunteers in 2023? Is this a Volunteers team that will get to the College Bowl playoffs? It, it, it could, obviously, if they go undefeated and they beat Georgia, and that's a good thing. But the question is, you know, obviously – if you had your old quarterback back, if you had him back, you would feel better uh, about thinking about Hendon Hooker if he was back. Now you get Joe Milton transfer from uh, Michigan, played well at times last year, has a cannon for an arm, but can he execute the nuances of Josh Heupel's offense? I think that that's the key because the quarterback in that offense is going to make a lot of different throws. Can Joe Milton do that? We'll see. It could, could, could. But um, I think they, they've got a chance. Obviously, they're going to be better 
they're clearly right now, I think, the best team in the SEC East. And, uh, oh, by the way, this is the last year we're going to say that because <laughs> divisional play goes away after this season. Forgot about no regional play. I want to ask you, though, looking over at Alabama, obviously, you know, we've all seen the spring game. We all jump to conclusions like we do every year in the spring. Alabama is not Alabama that they were five years ago. Is this a lull for Alabama or a new harsh reality that, you know, Nick Saban's going to have to adapt with Kirby Smart and Josh Heupel and others in the SEC? Well, it, it's it's going to be a fascinating season because, obviously, Alabama – is not as talented at the quarterback position as they've been the last four or five years when they've had NFL guys go. Uh, obviously, bringing in the transfer from Notre Dame to compete with Milrow is going to be fascinating. But what what is the what is the level of, what level of quarterback play do they get? And if they get a very good level of quarterback play, you don't have to be great. You don't have to be a Heisman winner, but you have to be good good in this league. Uh, then they can challenge. But I think most of the people that I talk to really like LSU because they've got Jaden Daniels back and they've got a they they've got a ton of players uh which LSU has always had and so I, I just think watching those two teams um is going to be fascinating all year long uh Alabama's good enough to win every game on their schedule but will will they and I, it's one of the top two or three storylines in the country is what's going to happen at Alabama I want to ask you, you mentioned LSU under Brian and Kelly. Obviously, they beat Alabama last season. They got to the SEC championship game. What is the ceiling for the 2023 LSU team? Can they return back to Atlanta? Yes, they can. They absolutely can. Uh, uh, when you look at the rest of the SEC West, uh, I'm not real confident that Texas a and is going to break through. Uh, that, that's, that could be... That could be a brilliant move or an unmitigated disaster, bringing in Bobby Petrino. So I, I yeah, I like I like LSU a lot. I don't, I don't, I think Ole Miss will be good, but I don't think they're, they're as good as LSU. So I, I think LSU right now is the, is either the best team in the West or the second best team in the West uh, right now. Staying in the West and you know talking a little bit about the state of Mississippi, obviously. You know, Mississippi State's replacing Mike Leach with Zach Arnett, and there's some excitement there, but a lot of unknown. What do you expect to see out of a Zach Arnett head coach team at Mississippi State? Fascinating story. It's a fascinating story. Losing Mike Leach, but you're bringing in Zach Arnett. I mean, he's a defensive guy, and he's bringing in somebody to run an offense where they're going to run the ball and shorten the game, which is to me is a fascinating move when you've got Will Rogers, a 4,000-yard passer, on your team, but he he believes, uh, Coach Arnett believes, that gives Mississippi State the best chance to win. So how that's all going to work out? I mean, is Will Rogers going to be grump, grumpy, be grumpy because he only throws for 3,000 yards instead of 4,000 yards? We'll, uh, we'll see, but complete, Mississippi State will look like a completely different football team offensively. Looking, saying in the Magnolia State, but looking over at Ole Miss and Oxford, obviously a lot of talk has been about their quarterback situation. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the quarterback room is phenomenal, but what do you expect to see out of that offense for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss? And who's going to be the starting quarterback on September the 2nd when they roll out? Well, for, first of all, you, you still got to go with Jackson Dart. I mean, the guy started a bunch of games for you through uh, 28, 2,900 yards. So the guy is good. But yeah, you you got the kid from Oklahoma State coming in who I think. He, I think he started five years, which is incredible when you think about it. Uh, but I, I think Ole Miss will be a pretty good football team. But right, right now, with as deep as their quarterback room is, and it's very deep, I still think you got to go with the guy who started a bunch of games for you and let him let him play his way out of the position. But the guy, the guy's not a bad quarterback. You know, what seems to be lost kind of a little bit in the shuffle this offseason, you know, now that we've kind of gotten the spring a little bit, is Hugh Freeze in Auburn. Nobody is really saying a whole lot about Hugh Freeze and right now what he's building at Auburn. What do you expect to see out of the Tigers in the 2023 season? Is this going to be a season where Hugh Freeze is building something? The experiment now with Hugh Freeze is better case scenario. Depends on how the quarterback position works its way out. Obviously, they've got the, the transfer from Michigan State and see how that that works. Because quite, quite honestly, uh, their quarterback play simply was not going to be very good unless this kid um, comes through. So if, if, if they get good, not great, just good, 
quarterback play, I think they'll be a lot better than people think. I, I, I felt that Hugh Freeze was absolutely the right fit at Auburn. I still, and I feel very strongly. And if the quarterback play doesn't work out this year, you know what? It'll work out next year because the guy's got too good of a track record. Talking about Hugh Freeze, the guy's got too good of a track record with quarterbacks uh, not to, to fix that position. Jumping over to the SEC East and obviously Kentucky, South Carolina, two of the most under under talked about teams right now in the offseason. Obviously, South Carolina, they've got a lot of guys back. But I want to first ask you about Kentucky. They've got a great transfer quarterback coming in from NC State, a pretty good offensive line. What do you expect to see out of Mark Stoops this year? Is this a Kentucky team that can get back to 9-3 and three and go back to the Citrus Bowl? I've already told people not to overlook Kentucky. Uh, because they did, they went and got what I think, along with Sam Hartman, the, the best quarterback in the transfer portal. Uh, the guy put together great numbers two years ago. And he, here's the other thing that nobody talks about. Liam Cohen returns as the offensive coordinator. It was Liam Cohen two years ago uh, with Will Levis that put up great numbers. Now, last year, Liam Cohen went back to the NFL. And uh, guess what? Uh, Will Levis didn't play nearly as well. He was banged up. But uh, so I think Kentucky's the team you better you better not overlook. Uh, we're assuming that Tennessee's the best team, that South Carolina's the third best team. But uh, be, be careful. Be careful with Kentucky. Looking at Beamer Ball in South Carolina, they beat Tennessee last season. Uh, talk about Beamer Ball. What do you expect to see out of the Gamecocks in 2023? Well, I, I felt that, that Shane Beamer was going to be a great fit if they could recruit, and you knew they were going to recruit at South Carolina. He's done it before. And and they finally figured out some things to do uh, at quarterback. And so he he played very, very well. Spencer Rattler played really, really well the last half of the season. question is, can he continue? The thing I'm concerned about for South Carolina is they'll lose their best running back, Marshawn Lloyd, to uh, the the other USC, and they're not nearly as good on paper, running the ball as they probably need to be, uh, you you don't you're not going to get away with having to throw it 40 times a game. I just don't think that's going to work. So let's let's see if they can find themselves a running game to complement Spencer Rattler. If they can, then they're going to jump up and beat some people. Last question I have for you. I want to ask you about your career. Obviously, you've been around SEC football for a very long time. I want to ask you about maybe your favorite memories, one or two memories that have stood with you over the course of time, Val. Well, <laughs> there, there's there's a lot of them, but um, uh, I guess I, one that will always come to my mind is people ask me about the best games I've ever seen. And uh, – the best game I ever saw easily was the Rose Bowl between Texas and USC uh, and for the 2005 National Championship. I just thought that was – there was a great atmosphere, just absolutely incredible. And then I came back a few years later and watched Georgia play Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl in a playoff game, one of the best uh, I, I've ever seen. Uh, I was standing on the far end of the end zone when two of through – uh, Tangle of over through through the long touchdown pass to beat Georgia in the playoffs in overtime. Uh, that was an incredible sight. I've never seen Nick Saban so happy in <laughs> in my years of dealing with him. But I'm I have been very very fortunate um, uh, to get to do what I do for a living. And this will be my 46th year of doing it, so I'm I'm very lucky. Follow up on that. This has just came to my mind, but I want to ask you about when you retire and you step away from this. What do you want your lasting legacy to be on on college football and in particular the SEC? Uh, I I think it's just th that I was fair, that I was fair, and I, when I try to write something, I was always fair to all the parties uh, involved. Uh, and if you if 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 I can walk away with that legacy, that'll that'll suit me just fine. He is Tony Barnhart. Thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis Show. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to have to have you on maybe uh, in Atlanta next uh, December. All right, Mitch. Good to be with you.
You have been listening to the Mitch Davis Show, brought to you by the Cotton States Baseball League in New Albany, Mississippi. Played at the BNA Ballpark there in New Albany. A very special thank you to our guest, Tony Barnhart, for joining us today, talking all things Southeastern Conference football. It is right around the corner, folks, and it is a lot of excitement going on in the Southeastern Conference. I've been your host, Mitch Davis. Follow me on Twitter, Mitch Davis underscore eight. Check out the website, themitchdavisshow.com. Podcast at YouTube, The Mitch Davis Show. And then also be sure you check out the Cotton States Baseball League across the web as well. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, the website as well, Cotton States Baseball League. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Tony Barnhart for taking the time to talk about Southeastern Conference football.